I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah, but if you had to, though. We set the scene. We have a choice. We must decide on the correct answer. I'm Kyle. And I am Nathan. And this is, if you had to, though. That was a very long pause, Nathan, between the (laughs) and I. Fantastic effect. Just in case the audience is on the um, edge of their seats going, who could it be? Who could it possibly be? (laughs) Who could the second person in the podcast possibly be this week? What special guest has he got now? (laughs) And then they were disappointed when it was the classic Nathan. No one is disappointed by classic Nathan. I prefer rare vintage Nathan. Collector's item Nathan. (laughs) Everyone cheers. They're like, yes, Nathan again. Everyone wants to encase me in plastic and put me on their shelf and never, ever take me out of the box. Oh, no, you can't take classic Nathan out of his original packaging. He loses loses his um, collector's value. Yeah. Have you got a mint condition Nathan? I thought you were going to say, do I have a um, a catchphrase that when you press my back, a karate chop, and I say something? Oh, what, what would your catchphrase be? I was just trying to think of that myself. Like, for this podcast, it would probably be, and that's a fact. <laughs> that's yours, Kyle. Oh, is that that's mine? Your catch- okay. Ca- that's your catchphrase. That's your catchphrase. Um, mine would be, it's like, um, it's like shooting orphans in a barrel. <laughs> That, that classic catchphrase. Do you think we should have catchphrases for the show? I don't think we should force it. I think we should just let like, that happen. I think we should force it hard. Like, oh, okay. make it so really obvious. Unnatural. Yeah, really unnatural. Like, so obvious that we're trying too hard to do catchphrases. It's like, ev- every time, I don't know, it's, what's, what's something we do a lot in the show? Talk. We definitely talk a lot in this podcast. At the end of every sentence, we say our special catchphrase. Every sentence? Yeah, so like... No one uses catchphrases that much, Kyle. That would be insane. <laughs> that would be like an episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes dull every five seconds. But what would be my catchphrase at the end of every sentence? Your, I think yours is, and that's a fact. That works quite well. And that's a fact. Um, but me, um, oh, what would mine be? Uh, what should we do next, Kyle? I was trying to think of, and that's a spicy situation we got ourselves in. <laughs> that is what you say every week, Nathan. And that's a spicy situation we've got ourselves into. You've just edited it out before. Yeah, I've I've edited it out because I thought it was silly. But now I realise it's your catchphrase. I'm going to keep it in. So you know, say it say it as often as you want. Well, I'll say it as often as I normally do. And that's a spicy situation. I mean, it only really makes sense for me to say it after the scenarios. It doesn't make sense before. No. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no situation. And that's a factor. <laughs> well, I, we just say it in like really stereotypically the Mario Brothers accents. Yeah, exactly. Because you did add an A to the end of the word fact there. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a factor. factor. <laughs> that's how that's how I say it. That's my special catchphrase, and that's a factor. Um, so the premise of the show is that we create scenarios for each other, resulting in two possible outcomes. We'll discuss each outcome's pros and cons and decide definitively on the correct answer. Exactly. Scenarios or spicy situations. And that's a factor. How quickly do you think our audience is going to get bored of us saying this? Oh, no, they will never get bored. These are our catchphrases forever now. We will definitely not forget about these come two weeks' time. Absolutely not. So, Nathan, this week you decided to get yourself some plastic surgery. It's, it's about time. I yeah. mean, I am a fugitive on the run, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. I need to get the most um, indiscreet, down-to-earth, normal-looking plastic surgery you can imagine. So, um... I'm just in, so you you just explain the normal plastic surgery that I got, Kyle. So you want to get yourself a pair of boobs, obviously. Uh, exactly. Obviously. I mean, you've got the money now, so you can pretty much have anything you want. You, yep. You, if you've got enough money, get yourself some boobs. That's what I've always said. Get get yourself a pair of boobs. I mean, is there anything else you got while you were there? I got a nose on the end of my penis. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the, the where you most want to smell things. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> I mean, that's what they did cut. <laughs> they had to cut it to attach the nose and then reattach everything. Other than that, no, perf- everything's perfectly normal. I mean, I have a tail now. 
So yeah, so you Help my balance. So you've put in for all these all these things you want at the plastic surgeons, uh, but the the main thing is this new pair of boobs. Yeah, um, it was the most important thing. I I had to, I stressed that to my doctor. They were saying yeah. like, well, actually, you've got a couple of the tumors there. We really should cut out. I was like, no, the, the boobs. <laughs> That's the important <laughs> thing. Prioritize on the boobs. So you turned up at the uh, hospital and you thought, right, I'm going to... You didn't think anything. You turned up at the I mean, hospital. That, that is my... Um, I was going to yeah. take a fatal flaw, but I have no flaws. That's my... That's just my... That's just the way I do things. I don't think. No. I just do. So you turned up at a hospital. You went into the room. The nurse gave you your anesthesia uh, and you were... Get, you know, you were falling asleep. You were almost I, about... I to... pulled a drool over my chin. Yeah, you were almost about to pass out. You were still slightly with it when you when you realised you were in the wrong hospital for a start. Oh, what a, what an what a silly situation! You know, what you, a spicy situation I got myself in. And that's a factor. Yeah, so you realise that you're in the wrong hospital, but you do that all the time. You you wander into the wrong hospital. Unfortunately, okay, totally. unfortunately, you never get as far as going under anaesthesia. I mean, the doctors didn't realise I was in the wrong hospital either. I just turned up, said I'm here for a surgery, and they're like, "Step right this way, sir." Yeah, there's a reason for that. Your doctor turns up, and he has a bottle of whiskey in his hand. <laughs> He's taking occasional swigs from it. He doesn't look very with it at all. He's got like bags under his. Eyes. Oh, he so looks... he's not even wearing a surgical mask, or is he? Is he so drunk he's pouring the whiskey over his mask? Yeah, <laughs> it's like seeping through the mask, and he's sucking on the mask to get the whiskey <laughs> out. I mean, that's really put me at ease. I was feeling a little nervous to tell you um, that I'm about to go into surgery, but to see my surgeon stand over me sipping drinks through his mask uh, really put me in a put me at ease. Good, good. So yeah, he he comes o- stumbles over to you. Uh, what was your doctor's name again? My doctor's name yeah. was um, Doctor Scaramuchinosity. Hmm. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter because this isn't your doctor anyway. This is Doctor oh, yeah, Stevens. Of course. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is Doctor Stevens. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't trust the doctor that has a sensible name. Yeah, I, exactly. I would, I would have rejected him. <laughs> All my doctors have to have ridiculous names that were given to them by parents they hate. I have noticed that. Uh, so yeah, he stumbles over to you and he like leans on your bed and he looks you in the eye. He says, you're all right, mate. I'm here to do your surgery, but I can't quite remember. Was it was it the, the, the fat surgery or the thin surgery you were going for? And you are just literally just about to pass out and you have time. Half my face is numb. My tongue is numb. I can barely speak. Yeah, you've got enough enough vocabulary to say either fat or thin. I probably don't even get it out properly. I'll just say like... So you you realise that the hospital you've come to is that hospital for celebrities. You know the one where they go to where they either get the surgery to become super anorexic or there's this new uh, trend going at the moment where being fat is really fun and really cool. Name a single celebrity that's gotten surgery to get fatter, Kyle. Jim. Oh, yeah, Jim. I, I forgot about Jim. You're right. It's not a silly sausage I was. Yeah, so there's uh, there's a trend at the moment, isn't there? I mean, Jim, Jim's so famous, he doesn't even need a second name. He's like Madonna. Yeah, G- everyone knows Jim. Everyone knows Jim. And that's a factor. <laughs> um, so, yeah, to uh, get the surgery to become super obese. <laughs> you, know, you know how celebrities oh, right. love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, not just add a bit of fat. Oh, no, no, no. Super no. obese. Yeah. Inconvenient. Conveniently obese. <laughs> yeah, like think. Cause, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit curvy. But I don't oh no, think no, no! Wants to be so big they literally can't get out of bed. No, we're thinking like Violet from Willy Wonka I need, and the Chocolate Factory. I need, I'm going to need my ceiling to be p- taken out and have forklifts bring me my food <laughs> every day. Yeah, exactly. It's got to be like a bathtub filled with food. A bathtub filled with food, like just filled with um, chicken and peri peri sauce. Yeah, exactly. That's, and I'm... you just you eat it, bones and all, just the entire thing. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, you've got the choice. Sorry, now. No, 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 no. I need a few minutes to think about that, Carl. That's uh, ooh, that's a. I mean, now that would be a spicy situation. <laughs> so yeah, you've got the choice. You realise what this place is. This is the place but where established how fat I'd get. How yeah. thin would I get if I were to get thin? If you were to get thin, it would basically 
be like leather stretched over a skeleton. Like um, like you would have no muscles. That Rolling Stones guy called Mick Jagger. Yeah, you would be Mick Jagger. Just wrinkly. <laughs> but yeah, you would be gaunt. You you would literally you would look like a skeleton with skin. And my my bones. No no muscles. My skin. You can actually see my heart beating out of my chest yeah you would it would literally you would be shrink wrapped basically oh that's that's what anorexic celebrities love these days oh it's yeah a good I mean, look that, um celebrities really love to i mean that's the that's the fashion isn't it that's what you see on yeah. every um every magazine every modeling portfolio is just people so fat that they um they that, can't leave their house they are incapable they, <laughs> they can't fit through any doors they can't no. fit through double doors they wouldn't fit on a double decker bus or someone so thin you can see inside of them. Yeah. Those, are the, those are the things that all people, all people love to look like that, and like they look at celebrities that look like that with envy. They do. So you know, you've you've got the choice now, Nathan. You can like you. This wasn't what you came in for. You came in for your yeah. Because um, this is, I mean, this this day hasn't worked out quite as I liked. And I'm gonna get no. if I got fat. I'd have yeah. boobs. Yeah. I'd have bigger boobs than I was planning to have, to be honest. I mean, I was just planning to get um, 34 double Ds, but now I'm going to have 40 double Fs. So, living a day-to-day life. I mean, my life would be dramatically altered. If I was so obese, if I was one of those people that could not fit through a doorway, who was constantly in their bed, whose my legs, while, still, while fat, cannot... Um, are, proportionally much smaller than my belly and my legs could not support my massive weight i could Mm. not stand no Uh, definitely not i can't even lift my back up from the bed i'm literally backed into it and i have to be lifted up by um a bunch of things a bunch of pulleys a bunch of pulleys yeah big big hoist system you 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 would be a blob I would be a blob, and I would basically be sinking. My bed would be completely busted and broken, sinking into the ground. There'd actually be a sinkhole around me into my flat, going further and further into the earth. They'd have to lift me up once, uh, once a month to do some co- construction work to make sure I don't break through into the sewers. Whereas if you went the other way and you got super thin, like you would try and walk, and your leg would probably break. Like it would snap because you're so thin. My bones would be as strong. Although, actually, you're right. My muscles... It would be hard to support yourself, I think. That, my muscles would still be there. I, I try to think my knowledge of human bodies. Oh, yeah, you're right. Basically, there's nothing between my bones and the outer air. So, like, I'd be walking around in a, a stray breeze. And no clothes could fit me. So I'd have to walk around naked. No one is... Despite the fact that all uh, celebrities want to look this way, they still haven't designed clothes for that size. No trousers, even underwear, falls down me. They haven't made underwear tight or small enough. Exactly. Um, so I'm walking around naked, exposed to all the elements. Yeah, I mean, you could have, like, a blanket around you if you wanted. Possibly, but my arms would be so weak I'd barely be able to hold on to it. Yeah, it would It would feel like, a, like you were holding up a truck, this big blanket. I'd have to have a little trolley that I, I carry things around on. I couldn't carry plastic bags. I couldn't carry shopping in bags. No, I mean, even pulling a little, uh, a little trolley would be quite the task ask for you having no muscle mass yeah i mean this sounds amazing really it does and i can see why all celebrities want to look this way yeah it's it's all aesthetics and i'm walking around and everyone's just looking at me going oh look at him wow they're definitely not going oh my god that's disgusting what a freak oh god who let him out why is he not in a cage no they're all very jealous of you they're very jealous as they would be if i was um, an enormous obese blob definitely like jim uh, exactly and like like i said they had to they had to remove my ceiling they also had to remove the um the wall with my window um so i am exposed to the world as they walk past my bed and i just w- I wave at the neighbors no, they say, hey, Nathan, how's it going being disgusting and being washed by giant sponges from a metre away? Oh, you know, same old, same old. It would take about 10 people to wash you. They would all, they would all come with their sponges on sticks and start scrubbing you down. And they'd all be doing it, you know, like a Mission Impossible. They're hanging from strings in the ceiling. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if one of them tried to lift a flab to clean, they could... 
if they weren't careful, they could get trapped inside the flab. Oh, yeah, you, you have a few dead people inside you. Exactly, I have got dead people inside of me. Um, just, uh, you know, now, now they're actually a couple, just a few bones... Um, folded under me yeah i mean i mean one of these like everyone can see every bone in your body the other no one can see any bones in your body at all yes i mean if i ever got if i ever got a little excited if i ever saw a pretty girl walk past my heart would basically burst out of my chest like yeah like a cartoon except this time you would die yeah like a cartoon except it's excruciatingly painful pain like you've never imagined in your life i i think either scenario you're going to be in a lot of pain you're either going to be in a lot of pain because like your skin is clinging so tightly to your skeleton that you can barely breathe and um, I, I i think being that thin I'd be quite pr- prone to bruising, wouldn't I? The slightest wind. Um, if I try, if I, you know, I mean, now that I am the prime, um, prime looks, I'd obviously be able to get dates, no problem. But the second I took this lady into a romantic situation, turned down the lights, put on the um, ABBA soundtrack, and we started grooving the night away, the second our lips touched, my um, my face bones would shatter. Yeah, there is that. Uh, I mean, you could, tr- like, we've talked about food. Um... Um, you having your bar oh, yeah, you of food, food inside of me. I'd eat, a, I'd eat a piece of chicken and it would stick out of my stomach. See, be, being that thin, a piece of chicken would be too much for you. Like a grape would be a big meal for you. It would be quite filling. Whereas if I was super fat, I would need, as we said, after I'm filled with food. If I'm gonna have, um, if I'm gonna have a curry, oh my god, if I had a curry, the um, you were, you were, you wouldn't be able to have a curry, Nathan. No, it'd have to be 100 curries, <laughs> probably. But I'm just imagining the aftermath of a curry. It's, um, you know, it has an impact on you. And you can't really fit on a normal toilet. I normal toilet? What toilet do you think I can fit on? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I said that. I can't think of a uh, toilet that would be suitable. The, um, you just have to go... You, they... I have to be sat on top of a volcano to go to the toilet. I was thinking more you just empty our swimming pool. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Just they, they sit in the middle. Me, they, they pick me up, drag yep. me over to a swimming pool. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. They, they put me into um, one of those paddling pools, a plastic paddling pool that they've blown up in my garden. It'd have to be they, a bloody just, big plastic paddling pool. It is a bloody big plastic paddling pool. That's that's a actually, bloody that's, big plastic paddling pool. That's actually the brand name. <laughs> a bloody big plastic plastic paddling pool. That is a tongue twister, that one. That is. That, is. Um, that should have been our pre-show <laughs> warm up <laughs> but yes they would have to lift me into that i do what needs to be done and they take me back i mean it's going to take about four or five cranes just to lift you and put you in this pool mm. whereas so you've got to a, hire those a, as well a, it's this is all sounding like a lot of money it is i mean oh yeah you're right i would have to um what would be my job in either of these scenarios i can't <laughs> go to work I think you'd have to work from home in both scenarios. I mean, well, actually, as we've established, this is the prime look. So I'd be a, yeah. I'd be oh, a. Oh, you'd you'd be a hot I'd model. Be a model. Exactly. Yeah. You're posing in um, in modes, um, you know, now you're a tiger, you're a tiger. And yeah. uh, when I'm an anorexically skinny, I try and pose like a tiger, but my muscles break away. Whereas when I'm a giant flat bob, um, blob even, I roll over, go raw, and then... <laughs> And then roll all the way over and cause a small earthquake. Uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like the perfect life, to be honest. But which one? Which both one would be the perfectest life. Yeah, exactly. You need to. They're decide. both amazing. Yeah, like, I, like as I say, the mo- money-wise, if you didn't have a lot of money, then I would go for being skinny, just because you spend a pound on a bag of grapes. That's going to last you all month. Yes, you're right. Whereas yeah. being obese, you're spending thousands I, on trains on bathtubs of chicken. I've, hired, I've got like 200 staff that have to clean me, um, I operate the cranes, uh, yep. move me around, um, hold newspapers up for me because I can't lift my own arms up. They turn the television on for me. But I don't know why I said newspaper like anyone. I, don't, I haven't read a newspaper in years. I just get my news online. <laughs> oh my God, I wouldn't be able to operate a phone. My, ju- my fingers would be bigger than any phone that's ever been invented. Yeah, you, you would need a custom-made gigantic phone. Or an 80s phone. <laughs> they got me an yeah. 80s phone. You know, one that's basically um, a brick. And all I could, you can't use the internet. You can't. All you can do is call people. 
who, if you were super skinny and brittle, you would press the numbers of the phone and break your. I'd break press your the fingers. numbers of the phone, but the phone wouldn't even register that it's being touched. No, you would need one of those super soft touch phones. And again, another brand name. Super, super, super soft, soft touch phones. For all your super soft touch needs. I mean, actually, that sounds a bit dirty. <laughs> <laughs> super soft touch needs. But, um, wow, that is a lifestyle. I mean, a super skin anorexic man, I could still walk around. It would be painful, but I could still do it. I could still have my freedom. Like you said, it wouldn't cost me as much. I would I would live basically off of soup, but I would be wildly unprotected from the elements. The slightest breeze could blow me over, throw me into the river. I, I couldn't lift my keys to unlock my door, so I'd probably still need staff to help me around. I'd actually, I'd probably do like 10 minutes of walking a day, and then I'd have to sit in a buggy and even then I've got no I've got no meat on my ass so sitting down is really uncomfortable for me you know there's no there's no padding between my uh, there'd be no padding between the coccyx and um and what I'm sitting on so any no position would be comfortable to sleep in lying on my back on the side hanging upside down um strapped to a torture table like I normally am um, yeah, you, your house would just have to be filled with cushions. one of those um, game show wheels. Um, what's a, oh god, what's a game show name? I can't, I've forgotten everything. What's a game show where it's got one of those wheels that you spin around? Wheel of Fortune? Wheel of Fortune! <laughs> Jesus. I knew there was something blindingly obvious that I was forgetting then. I was like, who, do you want to be a millionaire? No, no, that's not it. And um, catchphrase, they don't have a giant wheel. Does that show even exist anymore? Um, we've gotten off topic, off topic now, but then, being a giant fat blob, the only thing I could do with my life is watch television. Not much change, to be honest. Um, and it's only be a, a few extra pounds. God. God, that's a tricky one to be honest I, my initial thought was being a fat blob because having food delivered to me in a bathtub does sound, does sound like fun but I think for the freedom of actually being able to get up walk around you know walk around the town naked exposing myself to all the cameras and paparazzi uh, I'd actually be able to walk over to the fridge I wouldn't need I would be able to wipe my own bottom something which I'm very proud of you know I finally figured it out just last week I don't want to lose that freedom so I think I'm going to have to to go i'm gonna have to say to the doctor finn um or as we were saying earlier because i'm on anesthesia 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 i'm on finn so yeah the dr stevens or dr stevenson whatever his name is he doesn't even know because he's that drunk <laughs> he, he just <laughs> himself five times to me with different names hello i'm dr stevens i'm your doctor today i'm gonna be doctoring you um you're you're my patient and i'm dr S- stefani um and uh, that's that's why I, Doctor Stefanio, am uh, here to help you, patient, uh, with all your fat thin needs. So what 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 surgery are you doing on me, Doctor? Anyway? Oh, I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cut and slice and stab and suck and or suck or blow. I'm either gonna suck fat in or blow fat out or other way round or maybe both. I don't, yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. It's definitely both. That's it. I mean, just, I, I definitely know what it is you, you need me to do. But um, just just so I'm certain, I mean, not that I'm not already certain, because I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> but just so I'm certain, tell me what, I, um, what I'm doing to you today. And I would say, thin. Thin. And yeah, so you would get all of the muscle and fat sucked out of your body. Yeah, because definitely when... When people suck the fat out of you, they also suck the muscle out of you. That's definitely how it works. Yeah, they have a special hoover. They stick up you. Yeah, yeah. They've got two hoovers. They've got one for fat and one for muscle. Actually, no, it's one hoover, but it's just got a switch. A switch that says fat and then another switch that says muscle. Because, you know, you always want your muscles pulled out of you. (laughs) If you want to be skinny, if you want to be as skinny as you can be, you need to get your muscles taken out. That's a and that's a factor. (laughs) And this is a spicy situation I've got myself into. It really is, Nathan. So I'm now I'm now painfully thin, Kyle. I mean, I am. We are video chatting and you are seeing um, not only me naked, but you're seeing my insides, my my heart beat five times faster when I see you um or skip a beat when i see you whichever one it was or no, what 
what was the phrase? And his heart grew three times larger that day, and and then it exploded, and he filled up with blood. Yeah, you you don't want to get excited. You get excited, and your heart is going to explode out of your chest now. Yes. So you need to stay calm for the rest of the episode. Yes, you're right. It's like on the video chat. It's like looking. Hey, at... I was talking, Kyle. I was bloody talking. And as I was saying, um, yes, I need to be calm, calm and relaxed. You look like death. I'm going to choose to take that as a compliment. You're going to take that as a compliment that you look physically like death like your skin is so gaunt on your face that you look like the personification of death himself yes death is a sexy sexy thing death despite being thin is thick he can get it we're just gonna sit in this very comfortable silence for but it's the most comfortable it's so comfortable it's like a pair of slippers so you kyle you my dear friend kyle you were on your way home after a late night of gambling having fun playing a few games betting on a few things um you know you're betting on your favorite thing to bet on um illegal street badger fights i do love illegal street badger fights yeah and you get the badgers to fight um otters yeah i hate otters Actually, it's a different animal each week that's the bet yeah it's what can can a badger beat this can a badger beat blank can a badger beat that that's what the that's what the game's called can your friends do this (laughs) can a badger beat that can a badger wear a cloak can a badger wear a hat who knows it's the badger game we all know the words we all know the words everyone sing along at home now (laughs) to the badger game song (laughs) um Anyway, you were walking home after this um, exciting, thrill-seeking experience. Yeah, grin on my face, skipping my step. Uh, yeah, you, you won. You've won big, you have. You you guessed that that badger would beat the living shit out of that octopus. Mainly because you knew that, you knew that if they put an octopus out of the sea into a cage, it would die basically within a couple of seconds. And I, I did slip the uh, badger some steroids just to give it a fighting chance. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but yes, you are walking away with all the uh, all your winnings. Um, you know, um, I mean, you bet in chocolate bars, so you've, your your pockets are filled with curly worthies, Mars bars, M and M's, Reese's chocolates, other chocolates that exist. Anyway, you are walking with all of this just jostling around in your pockets, and you come to a parting in the road, a fork in the road. There are two pathways in front of you, and suddenly, out of the mist, because I didn't mention this was a misty night. It wasn't a misty night when you finished. Your illegal street fight it was actually clear and sunny but then suddenly the sun disappeared and all this mist appeared out of nowhere which perfectly normal i mean it's it was misty tuesday it's it's in the name um when all of a sudden out of the mist a wizard appeared oh i know um old old wizard old magical wizard mcgregor wizard mcgregor exactly and he pointed it at you his bony old fingers holding on to his wooden stick carved with all these amazing mysterious symbols inside of it and um yes and he wore a robe and he had a long flowing beard um and all the other things that you would expect a a wizard to have um he was wearing roller skates um and he had um he had a yo-yo in the other hand did he have a familiar he did have a pet walrus on a on a leash Oh, right, okay. Not on his shoulder, obviously. It's too big. No, no, not on his shoulder, obviously. And the walrus had a long, flowing white beard. It was a wizard walrus as well. And the walrus had a pigeon. On its shoulder? Yeah, that the pigeon was the familiar of the walrus. Of course. Did the pigeon have a familiar? No, you idiot. The pigeon wasn't a wizard. Oh, the pigeon is just a pigeon. The pigeon is just a pigeon. Just a familiar pigeon. Just a, yep, that good old pigeon. The, it's like that classic old phrase, sometimes a pigeon is just a pigeon. Everyone knows that. And that's, that's, and that's a fact. Uh. Exactly. First fact for the episode, sometimes a pigeon is just a pigeon. That's definitely a fact. Write that in your book. In the big book of facts. We should be on to back on to fact 510 now. Should be if people are writing them all down correctly. Um, but anyway, this wizard, he appeared in front of you with a dire warning. And he said, Beware, young one. The future before you, down the one path, lies a life of infinite stupidity. Stupidity of a mind clear of all intelligent thought. And down the other path. It's a life bereft of all feelings, bereft indeed of your very soul. Your fate is in your hands. 
choose your path, choose your destiny. And then the walrus went, ah! That was a beautiful... That was a great recording that you made of what the wizard said. Yeah, that that was... We, let's both applaud that wizard. Yeah, that was like a teleplay. That was, that was like listening to an audio book. Like, with someone who actually cared about the book they were reading. Yeah, yeah, not like one of those bloody Shakespeare audiobooks. He didn't give a shit, did he? <laughs> he was terrible at audiobooks. Stupid old Willy Shakespeare. Obviously, my first instinct is to turn around and walk back the path I came down. But that is not an option to you, Kyle. It's not an option to me. Is there, like, a brick wall appears behind me? No, Kyle, because you cheat at that illegal street fight, and down the path you came from is about a hundred angry people that just gave you their money that want to beat you to a living pulp. It's because I gave the badger steroids. Damn. I knew that was a big mistake. Exactly. The bad the badger's not quite happy with you either. He wants to fight you. And he he's all amped up now as well. They just chose after you left that you will be the next person to fight the badger. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's me versus a badger on steroids. That's not great. No, but so that is not an option, Carl. You can't go backwards. I definitely don't want to go that way. I don't want to have to fight a badger. And yeah, can't go sideways. I mean that those um, those paths are lost to you forever in the mist and um you know there's nothing down there it's not like uh well, I'm not... Through, it's not like just through the mist you can see a pub um and a, and a nice um and your nan is sitting in there waving going you kyle I, I bought you a drink no there's definitely not that you can't go it that way that that way no, guys, no. So... If, if if there's mist then i'm uh, and i can't actually see the path i'm walking i'm not yeah. going to walk down it that could be dangerous even though you can hear through the mist your family saying hello son Fancy seeing you here, but you can't see them. So that you could don't... be a, that could be a trick. That exactly, could, that, that could be a hyena, it, or it could be the badger trying to play a trick on you. Yeah, maybe they've learned to do the hyena thing where they um, where they make the call of your family to lure you to your death. I didn't know that was a famous hyena call. Uh, yeah, they were the sound of your family. They they imitate other people to lure you to your death. Now that is an interesting thing. That and that's a factor. I had to feed you that line, <laughs> but yes. Um. So Kyle, you have a choice to make. You have been given this warning, this this prophecy of your future. Um. And you've got these two paths in the road. And the wizard, you can't get more information because the wizard then disappears with the wind. Oh, okay. And the walrus disappears with the wisp in the wind. And the pigeon just flies away because it can fly away. And it does shit on your head. You are thinking about this future and this warning that you've been given. And you know, you don't know how, but you know that if you go down one pathway, you would become amazingly stupid. Okay. And your brain would basically stop working. You um, you know, it would work biologically, but not into. I would, I would get around. I would, I would stumble about from place to place. Yeah. I would eat when I was hungry. <laughs> You move your arms, you know, all your yeah. automatic functions are still working. But you can't pick up cutlery. You, um, no, you no, no, no. You end up jabbing yourself in the eye with a spoon. Um, yeah, I, I, it, I would just grab whatever was nearest and stuff it against my face. You can't say any to... words more complicated than ah and in. Any, anything, more, anything with more than one single syllable... And you have, um, you, you know, you just can't remember the word. Um, so I'm, I'm not even as smart as a caveman. You are not even as st- smart as a caveman. You you don't even know. How, you can't figure out how to make a fire. How to no, a, definitely not. No. How to wear your your kills as as um, as clothing. You are amazingly stupid, Carl. I mean, I know it's hard to imagine because you're actually the smartest man in the world. But imagine that you weren't. Imagine if you were the opposite. Imagine if you were the dumbest dum dum who has ever dum dumed in the history of dumbness. Mm. Imagine that you were so thick and idiotic and ridiculously stupid that you couldn't even get food into your mouth. You would jab it all over your face, put it into your ear, thinking that that's how you eat. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not liking the sound of this. What was the other option? The other one was you would lose all of your feelings, all of your soul, all of your emotions, Kyle. Um, you wouldn't. You would have. No appreciation of beauty, no joy in life, no sorrow, no happiness, no... What's another emotion? You wouldn't know what it's like to to lust after a brick wall or fall in love with a leprechaun. 
You just, those those experiences would be. I would lost. I would feel absolutely nothing. Exactly. Mm, that's interesting. Like you wouldn't have a... joy from a good sandwich anymore. You know the love between a man and a sandwich. That that that, that love that dares not speak its name. Mm. So, yeah, like, I wouldn't enjoy things. I wouldn't dislike things. I wouldn't like things. I would just feel nothing about everything. Like, would nothing be... nothing at all would matter to me. Exactly. And I wouldn't care that it didn't matter to me. I wouldn't be seeking anything out. You're aware of what you need to do intellectually. You know. Mm-hmm. I need to earn money to pay bills and I need to eat food to live. And that's all you do. You go to work. You don't say a single word to anyone the whole time. No. You do your job, um, which, as I remember, your job is um, waxing supermodels. Um, and um, Only on the weekends, Nathan. Only on the weekends. Oh, I'm sorry. What What is it you do during the week again, Carl? During the week? Yeah. I build statues out of paper clips. Oh, of course. For that, foreign businessmen. Yes, for foreign businessmen. I mean, you know, had to build statues of all different kinds. You had to build a Godzilla for a Japanese businessman. Yeah. Uh, also, an anime girl for a Japanese businessman. You had to build a statue of the Queen for English businessmen. The um, Statue of Liberty for American businessmen. A statue of cheese for French businessmen. Cheese. That's the only French thing you could think of. Just a giant block of Edam. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. A statue of um, a sausage for Germans. <laughs> of course. That's not stereotypical or racist at all, Nathan. Oh, well no. done. And, I mean, you know, I mean, it's only the Germans. What are they going to do? Yeah. <laughs> they, they can enjoy a good joke. So anyway, I, so I'm either incredibly dumb or I feel absolutely nothing at all and don't care about anything. Exactly. One way, you're still intelligent, you're still the genius that you are, yeah. but you just don't care about anything. I don't, don't care don't, about you being don't intelligent. Effort. You don't put effort into anything, you just do what you need to do to live. Whereas the other way, you are so dumb, but you but you do feel you still you appreciate the beauty of things, you appreciate the joys of life. Yeah. Now I see like a squirrel foraging around, and that makes me so happy. I just see this cute little animal, and it makes me grin. I laugh. I clap. Exactly. You you feel so happy when you see that squirrel because you know all you have to do is hit it with a rock, cook it, and you'll have a lovely lunch. Do am I that intelligent? To know that killing an animal will give me food. I'm talking about you now. That, that's how you feel when you see a squirrel. That's how I feel now. But yeah, if I was really dumb, I would just see a cute animal and that would make me the most happiest person ever. No, you, you remember that they're tasty. I, I would be very. I would be too dumb to know that someone was being mean to me. So if someone was being mean to me, it would just bounce right off me. I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah, you are you, Kyle, are like um you're like a baby or a dog. Someone can say the nastiest thing to you, but if they say it in a sarcastic tone or a happy tone, you can't tell. Yeah, it, don't, I, it doesn't make. If someone says to you, "You, Kyle, are a piece of shit," and I can't stand every second I talk to you and see your horrible, ugly face because that person was smiling at you, you 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 think that they're you know. Saying that they love you. I mean, can I even understand language? I can't speak. You still understand language. You re- you remember your life. You understand basic things. You um you understand language, but you get very confused. Like I said, at any any words with more than one syllable, and you can't remember most words how to speak to people. You you've forgotten all formats of grammar. You go, me Kyle, I'm sad. Me Kyle, I'm whoops, pooed myself, and you know. You can't, you know, you can't say your, you can't say your catchphrase anymore. And that fact, no? Yeah. See, that doesn't sound very good. But then feeling absolutely nothing, that does, that's not great either. But at least I guess I could, I feel nothing. But people are like, you work for us, you do this job. At least I'm contributing to the work. I'm I'm giving something back. You'd still be able to, um, you know, you'd still be able to build the Mona Lisa out of paper clips. I can still do it. I just get no pleasure from it, and I don't think anything of it. I don't think, oh, I'm doing a good thing, or oh, I dislike this. It's just nothing. It's just menial. I do it. There, it's done. There you go. I mean, would I? Would if I feel absolutely nothing? Would 
would I even care about going to work? Would I care about eating? Would I care about living my life still? Or would I just be like, I will just sit on the ground and do nothing for the rest of eternity? No, I think you would actually still do things. It's not like you're depressed and you can't bother to no no i'm not depressed i just don't see the point in anything like i don't feel things so i think you you know on an on an intelligent level that you're meant to go to work i'm meant, meant to... i'm meant to do these things i just don't feel anything about it exactly and you don't have any conversations with people they'll ask you how was your week and you go my week was adequate my week was a week exactly i had monday then i had tuesday the day after that, I had Wednesday. Exactly. That would be a conversation with you, Kyle. Um, yeah, it, I would be the dullest person ever to talk to. Yeah, exactly. I had for dinner peas. In fact, it was 62 peas. The, the correct amount to give me the nutrients I needed for the day. I did not enjoy them. I did not dislike them. I ate them. They gave my body nutrients. I am still alive today because of them. Thank you. And a good night. I bid you. You no, you don't even bid people farewell. That's a, that's quite an emotional. No, I just I just turn and walk the other way. You don't even say goodbye anymore. You just finish your shift and you walk away. You go to your your significant other and you go. It is logical that we mate. And you just you basically just fall on top of her, flap around a bit, and then fall over and fall to sleep. I don't even, I don't think there would be flapping. It would be very military style. In out in out done shake it all about there's not even shaking all about actually no there's no shaking about there's no kissing there's no smiling it's just like it would be terrifying for the for my partner you would your face would be straight towards her just looking at her dead ahead no emotion no blinking not i'm not not smiling not frowning no just staring dead at her just like there we go we're doing it now yep there you go, and we are done. We are now finished. I have done what needs to be done. And then you roll over and go to sleep. I've done what needs to be done for the preservation of the human race. <laughs> yeah, it would it would just be literally just for procreation. Exactly, that's the only reason why you're doing it. I need to bring another of myself into the world. It is mathematically logical that we do it once every three months. <laughs> or actually, you say once every every 90 days. There you go. Yeah, I don't like either of these, Nathan. That would be if you were um, bereft of all emotions. But if you had um, no intelligence, you would be so romantic, so tender. But you wouldn't really know what you were doing. You'd um, you'd actually be lying on the bed next to her, humping the bed, going, "That's that's it. Is that good for you, baby? I hope you're happy." I love you so much. I wouldn't be that smart. I wouldn't know what was going on. Like, I would just... You'd be <laughs> plugging yourself into an electrical socket, would you? <laughs> I don't know. I would just, In like... the electrical tingle, thinking, is this, this is what love feels like. Just, like, whatever feels good, do it. It makes me it makes me happy to rub myself up against this lamp. You're, wear, you're wearing your, your glasses backwards, so you can't see anything. <laughs> Did I do it? It's like, that's my belly button, please. (laughs) That was my mother, Kyle. (laughs) So, yeah, I don't like either of these scenarios, but I think, I think I'm going to go for having no emotions whatsoever. Because I I think being incredibly dumb, it's not, it's not really any way to live. You you think living day to day being emotionless is better than living day to day being so stupid that you do every single task that you do wrong. Like you're you're wa- you're waxing those supermodels, but you're actually slavering wax over your own face and pulling off every single hair on your own face. And you're trying to build a paperclip statue of Diana Ross. Diana Ross, naturally, and you actually build a paperclip statue of Ross from Friends. <laughs> That's quite impressive if I can manage that. That's what you think you're making, but yeah, it doesn't look like anything. You've just thrown a bunch of paper clips on the table and gone, done, me done, me get paid now. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'll be incredibly logical and feel absolutely nothing, be soulless pretty much, because I think that is... It's got to be better than having no brain. It's out of the two that does sound more more logical. Sounds it sounds more logical. I think the only reason I'm saying this is because this is what happened, and I and you're now giving me the logical explanation, of course. 
Exactly. So from now on in our podcast, because I've chosen this way, everything I say is going to be logically correct. And it, like we were very correct before, but now we're even more correct. And that's a very logical statement to say. That is a very logical statement to say. And every time we've heard you laugh, Carl, we know it's not from emotion. Oh, definitely not. You just logically thought, this is the time that I must laugh now. Yeah, this is the best way to do a podcast. That's, my brain is telling me that. I, I'm feeling absolutely nothing. I don't think you, any, any of this is funny. I don't think that this is a great conversation. I'm. You think absolutely nothing of me as a human being. I think, yeah, I, well, I think about no one in the universe, especially our fans as human beings or anything yes every single one of our fans is dead to you yeah they they might as well not exist to me and i think absolutely nothing of them i have no emotion for them you don't care if they were born at all i don't care at all so um yeah so thanks for listening to the podcast everyone again if you thought it was logical to say thanks yeah i i it's it's logic my logical brain is telling me what to say and how to say it so yeah we've both picked the correct answers for both of us and everyone knows that if i am yes i am now a pile of bones and um a just a beating heart and i am a robot yes you have no feelings no soul and um are just a utter utter bore to be around and um here's to our friendship kyle yes (laughs) skeleton and the robot And if you disagree with anything we've said today, then you can let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the episode, then please follow and subscribe to the podcast on Patreon. But be aware that whether you enjoyed it or not, Kyle does not care. I do not care in the slightest. Uh, You can find our Patreon page, if you must, at patreon.com slash if you had to, though, where you can find all the newest episodes with more being posted up all the time. And you can follow me on Twitter at Kyle M. Bennett. That's Kyle underscore M underscore Bennett with two N's and two T's. And you can follow me at N. Vozniak Art. That's N for Nathan, W-O-Z-N-I-A-K Art. Um, And you can follow me um, on Instagram at Nathan Vozniak. Same spelling, because that's my name. I I don't change it for different things. That wouldn't be logical, would it be, Kyle? That wouldn't be logical in the slightest. What What do you think of um of my Instagram account and my artwork? Do you, do you like my art, Kyle? I think nothing of your art, Nathan. That, that That definitely doesn't um that definitely doesn't destroy me psychologically and make me want to cry. This has been if you had to though. Hello, Nathan. Oh wait, that's not right. I have to say I have to say my name first, Nathan. You sound very emotional about that there, Carl. I do. I am very angry at this. You you're logically would be angry if you still had emotion. This is my logicalness telling me this is how I should act for you for the podcast to make it more entertaining, you see. So, shall I try that again? If, if you must. This has been If You Had To, though. I've been Kyle. I've been Nathan. And that's a factor. Those were two spicy situations. <laughs>